Hey everybody, Dirilly here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Nor 9 Var Commons. And we are on the second episode of Nanami and Heishi's Path, although we haven't actually gotten to the point where we've chosen Heishi yet. But we're getting there. That will happen very shortly. So you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Somebody else has to know. This can't be ignored, but... Nanami. Nanami, come here a sec. What? Just come here. Guys, you two go on ahead without us, okay? Uh, sure thing. Otomaru sent Shukuri and Muraboshi ahead, then took me by the wrist and pulled me a short distance away. Okay, Spill. Something happened, didn't it? It's nothing. Come on. You know that you can't hide anything from me. The other part of his power. Otomaru can telepathically send his thoughts to other people. We can't send messages back, however, he also has the ability to faintly detect other people's emotions. It's only a vague impression of general feelings, however. Everybody tells me they never know what I am thinking. Everybody but Otomaru. He sees through me much too quickly. That is a far scarier power than telepathy. It's none of your business. Let me go. Like I can just ignore somebody this upset. You're being nosy. And you bet, so. We're friends. Friends look out for friends. And he is far too quick to toss around words like friend. He's actually pretty irritating. Jeez, both you and Itsuki keep cramming everything inside. Try talking to somebody, it just might help, you know? <sighs> hey, what was that sigh for? Nothing. Huh? Wait, what was that sound? <laughs> Mikoto. <laughs> huh? What's with the huffing and puffing? You look like a glutton inhaling their dinner. The look of death. Yikes! Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Go? Do something about... Those three idiots! Three idiots? Mikoto stabbed a finger towards the water, where Yuiga and three others were floating. It's not the season for swimming. You can say that again. Are they actively trying to catch colds? Otomaru, why are you taking your shoes off? Because swimming sounds like a great idea! Go catch up with the others. I don't want to spend forever on this survey. Okay, fine. I'm going. Spoil sport. See you in a few. Alright, I shall leave it to you to deal with those problems. I have other concerns. Mikoto, did you see the broken wall on the second floor? Yes. Did something about it seem off to you? What? It was a large amount of damage, but there wasn't much rubble. There were only a few trees that had been knocked over. If the attack had come from outside the ship, I would think there would be a lot more debris on the floor. What are you trying to say? I'm not trying to say anything. I want to hear what you have to say. I was just hoping that you would have an idea that would lead me to a different conclusion than the one I have already arrived at, Mikoto. Will she notice what I noticed? She should. No, I know she will. She is both intelligent and perceptive. She is also proactive. She will come up with some way to deal with it. What are you talking about with Fancy Girl? Hey, don't you make that face at me. It's better than the face you're making at me. What? Why you? Ugh, talking to you pisses me off so damn much. Then why do it? I wasn't gonna. I was just on my way over to those slackers, having oh so much fun playing in the pool so I could punch out a lot of them. Huh? 
Uh, culprit could just be in it for money. Oh wait, no. Most people aren't dumb enough to try and walk onto a ship full of espers and piss them off even for a pile of money. Uh, grudge then? Would you have liked it better if it had hit the dining hall? Huh? What's that matter? I would have died. If you die, will you go back to normal? Who is he? Who are they talking about? Bah, this is stupid. Maybe he has like an epic grudge against somebody and he got on board to kill them? You know, Senri, you're a pretty fast swimmer. Maybe if we were in the water, I could beat Yuiga. That's it. I'll get a rope and tie him with it and put a rock on the other end. You're talking about drowning him? Senri. Whoa, Senri, that's not funny. Oi, what do you slackers think you're doing? Get to work, you lazy bastards. <sighs> Are you finished changing yet? Thank you, Nanami. And now what to do? Nanami. Nanami, I got something I want to tell everybody. When you're done scouting, come back to the meeting room. I'll bring Sakuya's crew. If you want to gather everyone together, finding Otomoru would make it faster. True, but there's something I want to talk to somebody about first. I'll head over when I'm done. I hate waiting on others, so just get over there so you're done changing, okay? I also hate this guy. Did she- I think she meant... Kakeru? Not her, right? <laughs> um... I'm not in the mood to stand around and be snarked at any longer. Nanami, guess what? I... I need to go. Hey, shut your yap, pretty boy. This isn't the time to be making jokes like that. I'm being quite serious, I assure you. So what proof you got, huh? Where's your evidence? I'm afraid I don't have any. That's enough, you two. Cool it. What's going on? I bought up what we talked about. Mikoto has made a move already, or it wasn't Yuiga who did it. You're kinda already acting like it's a definite thing there is someone. This could all still be just an accident. No, Otomaru, it was not an accident. There is a conspirator among us. I am absolutely certain of this. Mikoto, would you mind going over your conclusions again? Those who weren't present could use an update to alleviate confusion. Alright. So far, the ship has been attacked three times. On two of those occasions, I saw the attacker with my own eyes. He's a young man who appears to be of a similar age to us. He was present during the most recent attack. I don't know if he is working alone, but to this point, he is the only one I have seen. To this point, I have managed to rebuff the assaults using my barriers and the ones that I have deployed on this ship. Ah yes, I am certain some of you already know this by now, but allow me to explain my powers. I can create barriers of any size and shape I wish, wherever I wish. These barriers can repel any and all attacks. I have already set a barrier around this ship. I will admit that I have never had to enclose an object this big before, so the barrier across the roof is thinner than I would like. However, this latest assault opened that large hole on the second floor, despite a barrier already being deployed in the area. We can't say what kind of attack it was. None of us witnessed it. Right, none of us saw it. No one was there to see the attack, or Mikoto's barrier fail. Still, are you certain there were no flaws in the barrier on the second floor? 
Yes, aside from the previously mentioned area on the roof, the entire barrier is solid. And how... The attack came from inside the ship. Mikoto came to the same conclusion I did. I expected she would. Okay, okay. Are you sure we can definitely say that? Because that means you're implying that one of us right here, right now, is a traitor. Well, yeah. It sucks, but looking at the evidence, it seems like it's gotta be an inside job, you know? You saw how jacked up the wall was, right? But there wasn't much rubble and stuff inside. The only way that makes any sense to me is if you figure the explosion or whatever went off inside and just blew all the junk out. Huh? Where'd you get that idea? Common sense? Whatever the case, we need a plan now that we know this is a possibility. Really? Masamune? You're siding with him? I'm not saying there is a traitor or not, but we can't say for certain. So as long as the possibility of there being one exists, we can't just sit and do nothing. Considering the damage done, I would say the traitor is likely connected to our attacker, or has offensive power. See? That's what I've been saying. This has all been a setup from the beginning. Uh, what do you mean? The world sent the ship for us, right? You've seen how huge it is, but there are only nine guest rooms. That's it. But why only nine rooms? That's why I've started thinking. Maybe there are actually only supposed to be nine of us on the ship in the first place. That's just a guess. I don't think so. Just like a hotel with a hundred rooms is meant for a hundred guests. That's not true! Ho lots of hotels have rooms with double beds. So, you know, two or four people can sleep in them. Isn't this ship only meant for nine people because it has nine rooms? So, three of us aren't supposed to be on the ship? Right. We already know one, of course. The little one, but the other two... Itsuki! But, if that's the case, why isn't the world doing anything about this? It dragged us all on this ship, and now it's just going to ignore us? Oh, Toya, you can communicate with the world, right? Has it said anything about this at all? No, not a thing. I've asked it a dozen times about the number of passengers we're supposed to have, but I've never gotten an answer. What? <laughs> they don't give a rat's ass about us. I could have told you that. Hell, I bet you they're hoping they can get rid of us since we've ruined their precious balance of peace crap. That's nuts. Our world's sole purpose is protecting the peace. Why would it do something like that? Well, wait. Could it be that the ship was not sent by the world? This ship might not be from the world. I hadn't thought of that possibility. But only the world has the technology to create something like this. Yet... Whoa, hold it right there. Doubting the will of the world is a crime, you know. It's not doubting the... Not doubting the will of the world, doubting that... The ship is from the world. Well, that's enough talk of theories and suspicions. Right now we need a plan. For the moment, let's work under the assumption that we have a traitor amongst us. If we can't do at least that, we won't get anywhere. Also, remember there could be more than one. Our best plan of action is to just get everything out in front of everyone, I guess. What do you mean by that? We set up a policy right when we first got here, right? No prying into people's pasts and powers. Well, I say now we ditch that. Everyone has to come clean on where they're from, what their powers are, everything. Tell everyone our powers. True, if we knew what powers everyone has, it would at least narrow down our list of potential suspects, don't you think? I refuse. I'm not discussing my powers. Why? Personally, I think it's a good idea. Solid plan. No, it isn't anywhere near or close to good. I am not a traitor, and I will not tell you what my powers are. If you think all of us have powers we can make public with no consequences, you're dead wrong. 
Oh, come on. Why oh, be so defensive about it? Is it a really embarrassing power or something? Oh, whatever. Cockadoo, that plan sucks. Come up with something else. Okay, okay. I do have another idea, but I think this is literally the only other option. We split up into pairs and keep watch on each other to make sure nobody pulls anything funny. Pairs? What's the logic behind that? Why not groups of three or four? We've been splitting up our teams in four from the beginning, right? Obviously, that wasn't enough to stop the last attack. So, we need to break it down more into pairs. That's a good point. It does look like that's our best option right now. Honestly, I don't get the pairs thing, how that helps anything at all. Let's put it to a vote. All who are opposed, raise your hand. Well, the eyes have it. We'll go with Kakeru's plan. So how should we pair off? Hmm, good question. How about we let the girls decide who they're pairing up with first? However, girls can't pair up with girls. And why not? Isn't it obvious? Because two ladies can't have kids together. And neither can two guys, for that matter. Interesting. Should I sew those lips of yours together permanently now? Yikes. There are some logical advantages to pairing up guy-girl. If there's another attack, there will definitely be a guy nearby to protect the girl. That is very true. Also, it's highly likely our infiltrator is male. Huh? Why do you say that? Uh, well, that's mostly my own personal intuition, so I'd rather not get into the details. Hey, you already said this much. You might as well spit the rest of it out. For the love of God, no. I've heard way too many hunches today. If anybody says something, it better be a 100% solid fact, or I'm going to lose it. Unless you can prove it, shut it. That's exactly what I intend. Since there's a possibility we have multiple infiltrators, we need to have at least one girl keeping an eye on the guys. Huh. So, girls will be watching us, eh? Huh, cool. It almost sounds like you're setting them out to be bait to draw the perp out. I'm uh, not really. We'll lead the teams and the chore rotation the same, and set up what night patrols we can, okay? What we need to do right now is stick close to each other, and stay alert, making it hard for the traitor to act. Now, who's choosing who? If there is a traitor among us, there is a possibility that he or she isn't an Esper. Yep. The traitor is likely an accomplice to the man who attacked the ship. A uh, culprit could just be in it for money. Wait, no. Most people aren't dumb enough to try and walk onto a ship full of vespers and piss them off even for a pile of money. Uh, grudge then? And maybe he has like an epic grudge against somebody and he got aboard to kill them. A grudge. Still, this worked out great, don't you think? And now you don't have to worry about hiding stuff from little pink bunny girl. I mean, if this wasn't all aired out with everybody like it was, and it just, you know, leaked, she'd probably be in some pretty deep trouble. No, that isn't the issue. There is something far more important that went unsaid. I have the power to protect everyone here. It isn't the same as Mikoto's power. It's not as blunt and obvious, but it's still an effective one, and if I used it, I... All people have sinned, be it in great or small ways. All people hide pain in their hearts. Do you understand this, Nanami? Nanami, what ways do you think there are for removing pain and sadness from the world? The only one who can make best use of your powers is me. No, enough. I don't want to use them again. But... Yes, I have used my powers to protect countless people already. Protecting a ship or two of this size is a trivial matter for me. Oh, now I see. 
Thank you very much for protecting all of us, Mikoto. You bet. So, we're friends. Friends look out for friends. If I could be helpful for months. And here we will choose Heishi. And yes, uh, Ron is locked as I thought. Chapter 2 Unlike everyone else, Otomaru ended up on the ship simply by wandering aboard. Normally people get bought here by the world's minions, but he just cheerfully strolled on in here. Who wouldn't think that was suspicious? Just as Shukuri mentioned, we were all shocked. Everyone held suspicions towards him. How could anyone be so thoughtless as to just stumble onto the ship while getting lost? He approached us without having any clue who had what type of powers, so I instead exposed my abilities. He laughed so innocently that I immediately felt stupid for ever being suspicious of him. Some time has passed since he boarded this ship, but he hasn't changed at all. He's cheery and is completely trusting. He actually interacts with people, even me. When he says my name, Nanami, his voice is very friendly and filled with warmth. All the effort I put into avoiding others as much as humanly possible are undone by his voice. Every time he calls for me, I'm reminded of how nicely my name can resonate. Though I had barely spoken to Gagami until then, he, Otomaru, and I started to hang out more often thanks to Otomaru's friendliness. We all differ in age, gender, and birthplace, but now a bond has been created between us three. It's all because of Otomaru's friendliness. Oh, I just thought of something. How come you never wear a scarf, Nanami? Uh... Why did he notice that? Oh, you're right. I don't think I've seen you wear one since I boarded the ship. Well, I think you'd look cuter if you wore that red scarf. It's very feminine and flowery. Otomaru is nodding his head next to Kagami, and then he looked directly at me. His gaze was non-verbally prodding me for an answer. It's not like Nijo or Toya wear their neckties either. I didn't figure that anyone would care so much about a simple accessory. Just because it works for Mikoto doesn't mean that I look good in it. Nonsense! It looks cute on you too, Nanami. I don't like it when people tell me things like that. Besides, I already got rid of it. What? You got rid of equipment that the world supplied you with? I thought that would end the investigation. However, Otomaru did something unexpected. Here, I'll give you my necktie. Because red is no good, black must be okay. That's how his brain processed the situation. He thrust a black necktie at me. I refused his gift as calmly as possible. I don't need it. Why? This is black. I have no reason to accept it. Well, I think it's lame that you don't have something to wear around your neck. Lame. I don't mind looking lame. Lame or maybe lacking, I guess? When he stays fixated like this, it's irritating. I silently accepted his necktie so he'd stop. However, I have never worn or had to tie a necktie in my entire life. I have no idea how to put it on. Tie it like a ribbon, just like mine. Hmm, I don't think it's long enough for that. It should be like this, and... Okay, done! Are you happy now? Yup, looks good! He had a very satisfied smile. I don't like red. That's the reason I threw away my scarf. But I didn't have any sort of desire for a necktie either. And yet, Otomaru hands me his necktie without me asking for it. And once he puts it on me, he's incredibly pleased with himself. I've dealt with this type of person before. 
there are meddlesome busybodies. However, since that incident, I have continued to wear his black necktie. Although I am flummoxed by his cheerfulness and kindness, I silently continue to accept it. I think that because of Otomaru's situation, he's at a disadvantage in life. Telepathy, a power where his thoughts and emotions spill over onto others. For that reason, he can't hide or fake anything negative or painful. However, he always seems like he's having fun. He's a very emotional person, so whether he's expressing happiness or anger or depression, it's always with the same intensity. And yet, the first thing that comes to mind when I think about him is his smile. Even for someone like myself, who isn't great at being around people, I felt really comfortable being around him. I just couldn't figure out why I felt that way around him, so I was very eager to know. I can't anymore. Itsuki! Itsuki! Don't fall asleep! The battle isn't over yet! It's fine. I'll admit defeat. No! You have to do it right! My glorious 300th victory awaits! Jeez. If we don't finish up soon, we're gonna get chewed out by the chaperone. Don't worry about that! I'll be done after this one card! Okay, okay. Oh wait, you said just one more card, but it's your turn to draw a card. Nanami is waiting on you. Y yeah <laughs> Okay, now it's my turn. Here, give me a card. Y yeah oh, I wonder which it might be. I choose this one. And we're done. Let's head back to our rooms, Nanami. Okay. No, no! Just one more time! Oh, how many times do we have to get roped into here just one more times? Can't we at least play concentration or something where we have a range of choices? Playing old maid every time gets boring. Concentration is one where you have to remember the position of each card, right? I'm bad at remembering things, so that's a no. Oh, jeez. It's not cute for guys to act selfish, you know. Isn't that right, Nanami? Nanami! Don't you prefer snatching cards away from each other and old maid over slowly remembering where the cards are in concentration? You keep losing because you can't get rid of your hand. I don't really have a preference. I just think you would lose either way, Otomaru. <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> what? Why? Am I spilling my thoughts with my telepathy? Yep. It's not your power that's the problem. Oh, it's his poor poker face. <laughs> Nanami, there you are. You guys, just how long are you planning on playing for? See, here we go. I told you. What is that supposed to mean? Let me guess. You guys have been playing all night long. No, of course not. Yep, it's card endurance. You lose if you lose focus. Uh. That is not something worth burning your sleep time and missing breakfast for. Ow! Uh. Nanami, uh, it isn't good for your body if you don't get enough sleep. Okay. Uh, are you okay? Jeez, we have almost arrived at your room. Just endure a little longer. Koharu, hold up her shoulder on that side. Uh, yes! Where is your sense of propriety? What were you thinking going into a man's room? If you keep joining in with these activities, you are going to wreck your body. A regimented schedule, moderate exercise, and highly nutritious meals are essential. <laughs> Neglecting your sleep would put you in the same class as an idiot who is incapable of caring for themselves. I will not entertain such frivolous- Mikoto! Nanami's already asleep. 
Jeez, this girl. How could someone fall asleep while they're walking? <laughs> I guess playing cards with Heishi was so much fun that as soon as she stopped, she didn't have the energy to stay awake anymore. It's nice to see them become close friends. Become close friends is fine. I just wish they would exhibit some self-control. As I drift in and out of consciousness, I could hear fragments of their conversation. Propriety. Essential behaviors. Getting along. Kagami, Otomaru, and I are getting along. Apparently, that's what it looks like to others. I'm sure Otomaru would agree with that. Kagami, I'm not so sure of. He wouldn't deny it, but he wouldn't agree. My feelings are the same. I don't particularly mind enough either way. We hang out, but it's really nothing special. I don't particularly miss them when they're not around either. Would that be considered as getting along as well? I don't quite understand. Once they placed me on the bed, drowsiness triumphed over consciousness. Without any more time to find an answer to the random questions that had popped up in my mind, I fell asleep. And we're going to end this video on that note and continue in the next one. So thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you in some of my future videos. I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. And I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.